Hi and welcome to this tutorial on making realistic laser simulations in Blender using the LuxCore render engine. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is go to the LuxCore render website and select an appropriate version for your version of Blender. If you're using Blender version 3 or above, you're going to have to download LuxCore render development build from the LuxCore GitHub repository. Scroll down and select your appropriate Blender LuxCore add-on for your particular operating system. Then save the zip file to a folder of your choice. Then load up Blender. As usual, go Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and click Install and select the Blender LuxCore add-on zip file. It'll then appear in the list and simply tick it to Enable. Once enabled, go over to your render properties and change your render engine from EV to LuxCore. Change CPU to GPU if you have one. And change the engine type from path to bidirectional. Next, enable the Optics Open Image Denoiser. Enable Halt Conditions and select Use Time and here choose an appropriate render time depending on your PC. So the first thing that we're going to model in this tutorial is an optical bench to hold the lasers and our mirrors. So I'm just going to create a default cube, stretch it out and flatten it down. Then I'm going to press Ctrl A and apply the scale. So the next thing I'm going to do is just create a simple cylinder. I'm just going to increase the number of vertices to 64 just to smooth out the cylinder a bit more then right click, shade smooth, go over to the normals tab and enable auto smooth. So we're going to use this cylinder as a boolean cut operation so we can create little circular inserts into the optical bench. So I'm just going to move this cylinder over a little bit. I just want to line it up with the corner of our optical bench. Just manually dragging the sliders and I'm going to scale it down a little bit just to decrease the size. Then I'm going to press Ctrl A, apply the scale, and I'm just going to move the location of these cylinders to a more rounded location of minus 7 and 7 meters in the X and Y direction. Now I want to duplicate these cylinders, so I'm going to apply an array modifier, and I'm going to do a factor offset of 2 just to give ourselves a bit of spacing between the cylinders, and increase the number of cylinders to about 9. Then I'm going to create a second array modifier. This time the offset's going to be in the Y direction, again using a factor offset of 2. And then increase the offset to probably about 9, looks pretty good. Now I'm going to select Merge, so all the cylinders are stuck together, and I'm going to apply the modifiers. So now we have a single mesh containing all these cylinders. Then press Object Set Origin, Origin to Geometry, and that's going to place our origin point at the center the geometric center of these, and then I'm just going to set the location to 0, 0, 0, so it's centered on our optical bench. Next, with the optical bench selected, I'm just going to add a boolean modifier and select our cylindrical mesh as the cutting object. So that way we can cut the cylinders into our mesh. And then just go apply modifier. And I'm just going to hide the visibility of that so you can see what's happened. So we've just cut these holes into the optical bench and these are what would typically be used to hold the laser and mirrors in the setup. So now I'm just going to create a second cylinder and this is going to act as our, our laser geometry. So I'm just creating a simple cylinder, just stretching it out. And then in the overhead orthographic view, I'm just going to shift that cylinder just to the edge of the optical bench. And that's where our laser is going to sit for this simulation. And again, just apply Shade Smooth and Auto Smooth on the normals. Next, I'm going to create a cylinder again. And I'm just going to flatten this out, just so it's a very thin disc. And this is going to serve as the mirror in the simulation. So just flatten it out a little bit so it's very thin. And then just apply the scale again, Shade Smooth, and apply Auto Smooth. Okay, so let's add a material now. So I'm just going to click on the mirror, select new material, 
and I'm going to give this a mirror material. Actually, I'm going to give this a matte material first, so this will fall on the back of the mirror. And I'm just going to give that material a name. And then I'm going to assign that material to all the faces. Then I'm going to create a second material and press new and create a mirror material. And I'm going to call this mirror. Then in edit mode, I'm going to go to face selection mode, select the mirror side and then click assign with that mirror material selected. Then I'm going to go over to the Lux Core Material Nodes page and you can see here we have our metal material. I'm going to decrease the roughness all the way to zero to try and get a mirror. And then with the matte material, which will be the back of the mirror, I'm just going to darken the base colour a little bit. And I'm just going to rename that mirror. Rename the other cylindrical object and we'll just call that laser. And then I'm going to apply a matte material to that. And you can see we've already got a material applied to it. So just delete that node setup. I'm going to increase the roughness a little bit and decrease the base color just to make it a dark cylindrical shape. Then in the overhead orthographic view, I'm going to select that mirror object and I'm just going to move it to the corner of the optical bench so that it's directly in the path of our laser. Then I'm just going to drag the laser down a little bit so it's at the same vertical height as our laser beam. And now I want to rotate it by 45 degrees so that we reflect the laser beam at 45 degrees so then it travels along this top edge. And then I'm just going to press Shift D and duplicate that mirror again. Switch to our overhead orthographic view. Line the mirror up in another corner there. Just about there. And then we need to rotate the mirror again by 90 degrees. And then duplicate it again. Create a third mirror and put it in the other corner. Again, lining it up in the overhead orthographic view. And then rotate it again by 90 degrees. So that laser beam will be reflected around the corners of this optical bench. making sure that you have the reflective mirror side in the correct direction. Then Shift D again, create a fourth mirror and just place it about halfway along the optical bench. So I want the laser beam to be reflected into the middle of the optical bench and then rotate the mirror around so that's facing the other one. Then I'll press Shift D again, create another mirror and place it right at the center but I'm going to do something slightly different with this one. So I just place it at the center, rotate the mirror around so it deflects the light again. Go over to the materials tabs and create copies of those materials so I can modify just these ones. Go over to the material nodes and I'm going to decrease the opacity. So this is going to allow some of the laser light to pass through and we're going to make a beam splitter. Next, I'm going to create an area light, and this is going to be the light source for our laser. So I'm just going to place this laser right in front of the cylindrical object. That's going to be our housing for our laser. Rotate it on the y-axis by 90 degrees, so it's pointing down the length of the cylinder. And then place that area light directly in front of the laser. Just right in front there, so it's not inside the laser. And that looks pretty good. Next, on the right hand side in our light properties, enable the laser setting and decrease the size to a reasonably small value. 0.25 will probably be okay. And this creates a plain parallel light source. And let's change the color to red to be a helium neon laser. Then for the moment, I'm just gonna turn off our background lighting and let's just drag this down a little bit and render and see what it looks like. So you can see we can't see much at the moment. So to fix this, go to the area light, 
properties and just crank up the gain to something large like 5000. So you might not notice anything's changed, but if you look closely, you can see we're starting to get some speckled red light. And this is where the laser is reflecting off our beam splitter. So you can see the laser beam has successfully bounced off all the mirrors and back to the center. But to make it visible, we need to create a volume material for the world. So with the volume enabled on the right hand side, go to your LuxCore volume material nodes, select the world volume, delete the clear volume node, and I want to add a heterogeneous volume and connect the volume output to the volume input node. Now there's quite a few settings here, but the main one is you want to reduce the index refraction to one. Let's render that now and see what we can see. Nothing yet, so reduce the scatter scale. And once you reach a reasonable value, you'll see the laser beam start to appear. So just play around this until you get a, a effect that you like. I'm just going to go over to my light settings again. And I'm going to decrease the size of the laser just to get a finer beam. So 0.1. That's looking a little bit better now. Now I'm just going to increase the gain a little bit more on the laser to say 20,000. To finalise the beam splitter, I'm going to select the central mirror, select all the faces and assign the mirror material to all the faces. What this will do is it will allow a certain percentage of the laser light to pass through the mirror and another percentage will be reflected. So I'm just going to increase the opacity to about 50%. So 50% of the laser light will pass through the mirror and 50% will be reflected. Next, let's add a camera to our scene and position it so it looks okay. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit, just frame the entire optical bench and place it at an interesting angle so we can see all our elements really well. Something like that, perhaps. Next, let's add a HDRI to the scene. So I'm just going to open this studio lighting scene that I got from Polyhaven. Let's render it and see what it looks like. So you can see LuxCore renders slightly differently to cycles. So you can see it takes a little bit of time for the environmental lighting to render. And that's looking a little bit bright to me, so I'm going to turn the gain down a little bit. Wait for that to render again. Then I'm going to go to my color management and I'm going to try a very high contrast this time. And maybe switch filmic to standard. See what that looks like. And just play around with the color management until you find an effect that you like. Just going to increase the gain on the HDRI a little bit more just to increase that ambient lighting. Next, I'm going to add a metal material to the optical bench. I'm going to increase the roughness and darken the base color just to make a sort of a dark metal material for it. Let that render for a few seconds. That's looking okay. So I'm now just going to really crank up the gain on the laser. Let it render again. That's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to reposition the camera. I'm not really happy about the composition there. I'm just going to lower the height a little bit and change the angle. And that's getting pretty close, I think. Okay, let's just increase this opacity of the central beam split to 50%. So half the laser will go through and half the laser will be reflected. You can see there in the render. So I don't want the HDRI to appear in the background, so I'm just going to go to my camera settings and turn on transparent film here. So that'll maintain the ambient lighting, but you won't be able to see the HDRI. Let's give that a render. That's looking pretty good now. Just going to Decrease the size of the laser a little bit more. 
Then I'm just going to add a plane, place it underneath the optical bench, just so we've got it, the optical bench sitting on something. I'm going to apply a glossy material. So I'm just going to increase the base colour to a brighter white colour. Increase the roughness slightly, just so it's slightly glossy. Let's render again and have a look at that. So that's looking alright now. Let's switch over to the Composition tab. Let's click Use Nodes. So I'll just add a Viewer node so we can see the render. Connect the image output to the viewer and you can see our noise image. But if you connect the denoised output, you can see the result of the optical image denoiser. Next, I'm just going to create a glare node and place that in between the viewer and the image output and change it to a fog glow. And now it's given us that really nice laser glow effect. You can play around with the threshold values. Lowering it should increase the amount of glow. And you can play around with the mix level as well to get the sort of effect that you're looking for. And maybe increase the quality of the glare to a high. And I'm pretty happy with that now. Maybe increase the size of the glow a little bit. And that's all there is to it. A physically realistic laser simulation. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks again and see you next time.